soldiers march. Drums beat. And a hundred thousand men stand firmly gathered around one man. Now, build up your people, O Master. A new great fatherland awaits. You're watching Third Reich, The Rise. For more on Hitler's early life, go to history.com. It was 1932. This footage was recorded at a carnival near Leipzig, Germany. Filmmaker Walter Langer brought his 16 millimeter camera and the girl he would marry. The atmosphere was joyful. But beyond these carnival gates, there were calls for revolution. If you were German and you wanted change, you had two choices. Either you joined the growing numbers of communists, or like Walter Langer, you joined the Nazi party. The Great Depression was in its third year. And Germany had suffered as much as any country. German mother, your children's father and provider stands before the closed down factories, unemployed, without bread, without the hope that his lot and life will change. German mother, you want a good future and freedom for your children. This is why you will vote on the 13th of March for Adolf Hitler. On film, Walter Langer documented Hitler's first and only bid for elected office, the German presidency. If you opposed the Nazis, you were sure that this was the end of Hitler. Hitler himself is still rather a handicap for the movement that has gathered around him. Besides, for ordinary Germans, his personal appearance is thoroughly repellent. The epileptic behavior, 
the wild gesticulations and foaming at the mouth. The alternately shifty and staring eyes. Most of those who have begun to acclaim Hitler would probably avoid asking him for a light if they met him in the street. But in less than a year, Hitler would be chancellor. It was the 10th of February, 1933. Although they had never captured more than 37% of the popular vote, the Nazis were the largest political party in Germany. And so, German leaders installed Hitler as Chancellor. As many as 20 million people across Germany were tuned in to this radio broadcast. Hitler's largest audience ever. After this speech, Nazi party offices were flooded with so many membership requests, they had to suspend admissions. Even so, Hitler did not yet control Germany. In two weeks, that would change. You're watching Third Reich, The Rise. For more on the Nazi party, go to history.com. It was the morning of February 28th, 1933.
If you lived in Berlin, you awoke to this. During the night, someone had set fire to Germany's parliament. Just now, the revolution has begun in earnest. The middle class had been repelled by the roughness and lack of polish by the Nazis. Now, they've been frightened and won over by the Reichstag fire. To this day, no one is certain who set the fire that destroyed the Reichstag. But Hitler knew who he would blame. His rivals, the communists. The Nazi press said that the Reichstag fire was intended as a signal for communist cells across Germany to rise up and revolt. They wanted to send armed mobs into villages to commit murder and plunder. Hostages would be taken from the middle class. Wives and children of police officers used as human shields. The destruction of all cultural values just like in Russia. Hitler had invented a communist threat. Now he would use it to crush his opposition. The morning after the fire, I discussed these matters with a few friends. All of them are very interested in the question of who really started the fire. And more than one of them hinted that they had doubts about the official story. But none of them were bothered that from now on, their telephones would be tapped their letters opened and their desks broken into. Radical and violent changes were happening across Germany. But Hitler had justified them all. This ruthless intervention by the government may appear strange. But we must clean up. The communists have to disappear. After day, flags raised, buildings taken over, 